This is one of those fun Sundays where we celebrate great things um, in our church as receiving new members. And it's fun because we have the Super Bowl Sunday. But one of the things, even though I do not know a lot about American football, I do know that in any sport, as important as it is the team, it's also the strategy of that team. And uh, that will make you win or not. In many cases, even if a team is not that strong, but they have a good strategy, that will make them win. I want to show you one strategy of a team that I almost wanted to send it to Anthony, Natasha, to see if actually is fair and is actually correct what they did. Let me show you to you. It's fair, right? I mean, it's fair. I mean, it's just unique, but it's fair. <laughs> but uh, you see, that strategy is the one that puts you in a new place. And maybe today in the game, uh, what I'm praying a lot because I really love Herschel and Nan, but I also love my husband. So I am in this struggle of who's going to win. But we know that the good strategy is basic. God also has a strategy in our lives. There is a strategy that also leads our lives. And we have been learning a lot about that during these different Sundays. We have been learning about being fulfilled. And what does that mean? We are grounded, first of all, in the name of God. We know that the God that we had was in the past, is right now, and it will be in the future. That's where we ground ourselves. And that's the assurance that we have. Then we also learn that as Aaron was consecrated, anointed as a, a priest, we are also consecrated. And many times we thought that consecration meant something we should not be doing or something should be do. And actually, we understand the word correctly. Consecration is what you receive. We are receiving the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. We are receiving the promise on a life eternal through him. That's what consecration is. Because of that, we also remember that a lot of who we are as Christians is also that experience that we have directly with God, uh, with God. Like Caleb, Caleb was able to be strong in his faith because he remembered who was God. And I assure you that many of us, or all of us, I hope, we can remember when we say, you know, I kind of was lost in that moment, but I remember how God rescued me. Amen? We have some of those stories. And also... We learned last week about dedicating our life. We gave our life to God and say, I am not going to be ashamed that I'm going to proclaim wherever I am that I am a Christian. I want to let the people know. People are more open and in need to hear the word of God than what we think. We have believed that lie and it's a lie. But even if you go and purchase a coffee, wherever you go, and you say to the person looking at the eye, God bless you, never they will tell you no. I have seen that so far. I do that every time my kids are like rolling their eyes. I'm like, okay, here comes my mother doing the blessing. And okay, but they have never told me no because people are thirsty to find meaning. And I'm sure God is going to lead you in there. We remember the scripture that says, dear friends, God is good. That's why God is asking us something. First of all, always God gives us something. And what he's giving us is that we know he is good. After that, then we say, so I beg you to offer your bodies, how? As living sacrifice. Each of us, we tell God, use me according to your will. So that is the frame where we are talking about. And then today we're talking now about a strategy. God uses and puts our lives in right strategies. Now we can have a lot of mental and ideas and men kind of a finance idea, a vision. Those are important, teamwork, all of that, it's important. But be more important than that, we need to remember that we can have as humans a lot of strategies, but the root of our strategy is actually on Jeremiah 29, 11, and 12. So I want you to repeat this with me all together. 
For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. So our lives are not designed just to do what we have as capacity as humans. As Christians, we are designed to step on faith and do things where God is calling us to do, even though we don't understand the whole thing in the moment. But we need to take that step of faith and take those decisions. And in those places, go through the strategy in the right time, in the right place. For example, um, many of you probably have received the newsletter right? I am sure who read the newsletter because in the newsletter, I put a homework and four people have answered to my homework. So I know who's reading the newsletter, but I recommend you to go ahead and read specifically the section of Pastor Anson, where he's going to explain there a story of a man who actually connect to us at the ministry center through a care bag. But this man came and said to Pastor Anson, you saved my life. And when Abdon looked at him, he said, I didn't remember him. But he said, you saved my life because one time I came here and I was highly intoxicated and my life was a mess and I was not doing well. So what happened is you called the ambulance because I was really in bad shape. And the ambulance wanted to leave, just stabilize and leave. But you fought so they would take me to the hospital. And they did. And because of that, I was able to clean myself, to be healthy. And now I want you to know that I have a job, I have a car, and I'm doing great. Isn't that a great testimony? But you see, everything started with a care bag. It had, okay, so you, it was just the right place, the right time, the right strategy. That's how God is calling you and me, to be in the right place, in the right time, with the right strategy. It's just about you and me saying, God, take me to where you want me to do. Take me to the place where you want to use me and use me according to that strategies. So one of the stories that we know well about that is actually the story of David. When we read it, we have heard a lot of things about him, about David with Goliath and David as a shepherd and David as a king. But if you think about it, how specifically all the events of his life helped him to become the king that he was then you will realize that anything of your life, everything that you have experienced is not a waste for God. Always God puts things together so he can use that for his glory. And we find that in the life of David. Maybe we remember the story where we read today. As you uh, probably can see in the scripture is that the people of Israel, they were looking for a king and they were shouting everywhere, God, we want a king. And through Samuel, one of the prophets, God anointed a king and his name was Saul. Okay, how good was Saul as a king? He was half good, half creepy, right? So he was a good uh, in a season at the beginning, he was good. Then he started getting out of God's will and got distracted from God's will. So this is where God says, you know, we're going to need to have a different king. And we need now to anoint a new person for that role. For Samuel, that was difficult. You think about Samuel's role was to be sure to be that prophet who's bringing the news of how God is interacting with the people of Israel. So it was not going to be a good news to tell them, by the way, the other king was creepy. We're going to need to anoint another one. So there will be times when God is going to readjust your life and mind, and there are going to be decisions that you and I need to take. And for that process, there is these specific things that happen. First of all, we need to be intentional not to dwell in the I wish. I wish things were as I planned. I wish things happened as I expected. We need sometimes to learn that when we're doing God's will is very different than what we wanted to do. The scripture says here with Samuel, the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul since I have rejected him as a king over Israel? Fill your home with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. This is a very special scripture in the, in the Bible. This is an authentic chanclazo from God to Samuel. He's like, wake up, man. Stop being just there crying and having your party there. Like that. You need to, uh, it didn't work as you wanted. I get it, but now keep going because there is another thing happening in front. I don't know if God has talked to you like that. 
We have a God who's a God of compassion and love. But as a God of compassion and love, sometimes he needs to make us those wake up calls. Maybe for some of you are more intense than others. Maybe your spouse becomes a source from God to help you to do that. Amen to anyone here, right? When you say, you know, I'm kind of getting in this, you get in this stock. And that's what Samuel was, he was stuck. And God says, you need to move out of that because I have a plan for you. It is the same. There will be times when it's okay to have a time of sorrow and sadness, but there will be times when God says, okay, that's enough. Now let's move to the next direction. And that's where Samuel was. Now there is this beautiful, small statement in the Bible that I absolutely love. And it says, Samuel did what the Lord said. Wouldn't you like that your name is there? When you like that, when somebody asks about, so who's Jim? Jim did what the Lord said. The reason I say Jim is because 50% of the church is Jim, right? Right, Jims? All my Jims are there, right? And the other, other 25% are Tom's and one Herschel, <laughs> you know? So, okay. But won't you like to say your name and then did what the Lord said? I would love that. I would love to be known as a person who did what the Lord said. So that's what Samuel was. But then the next aspect of this is align your heart with God's heart. Because there will be times where you're going to take decisions that are not quite making sense. Like he says, you know, in my brain, this is not quite making sense. If we go back to the story that we read today, this is about uh, Samuel needing to anoint the next king, next king. But he didn't know who he was. He just knew he needed to anoint one of the children of Jesse. So he goes there and Jesse is really happy. I mean, they are going to tell you that one of your children are going to be the king. Who are you going to show? You're going to show the child who has done everything right and who looks has potential, right? So he's showing all the ones with the potential in there. And one by one, God says, nope, 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 nada. And there is a point when he's like, well, do you have any other child? And I can almost see Jesse kind of saying, well... I mean, I have these ones that are with potential. I have another one, but he even, he even stinks because he's always with those sheep over there. And I mean, he's, he's like, he's cute. He's cute. But, but I mean, needs to be from here for sure. I mean, maybe you didn't see well. Do you need some glasses? Because, you know, these are, these have potential. I mean, David, uh, I mean, he's still changing his voice right now. So when he talks, he goes like that. You know, so do you, are you sure about it? You know, so, and God says, bring him. So here comes David, cute, cute kid. But I can see when someone look at him and then look at the other ones, someone probably said, uh, God, can, can we go and talk in my office? And he's like, are you sure, God? I mean, do you see the difference of this cute little compadre compared to the other ones? I mean, something is not making sense. And God says something very radical in that place. What God says is this. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height. Praise God for the height. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And uh, of his stature. Glory to the Lord. Because I have rejected him. For the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. You see, so that is beautiful in so many ways. First of all, is is opening the opportunity to David to say, you know, you don't see potential, but there is potential. But guys, how many times you and I have felt like David? We feel like, you know, unless I'm not with this degree, unless I don't do this, unless I don't have all these characteristics or qualities, therefore it means I cannot be a good Christian or I cannot be used by God. You know, that is a lie from Satan. And that is a lie that he's trying to tell you that you are useless because he knows how powerful you are in the hands of the Lord. It is not about your appearance. It is not about how you feel. It's about understanding that your heart and God's heart are in the same place. That's how it goes. I love this part of the um, uh, one of the commentaries, and I wish you and I can memorize that. It says, the Lord instructs him to suspend human logic and trust in divine guidance. That's where you and I move. 
We go against whatever human says. There are so many times that you and I can say we are in the front list of failing in what we feel God is calling us to do. According to Meyer Briggs, the last personality that can be a pastor is an ISTJ. Did you read that one? I am an ISTJ. <laughs> yeah, and, and we can say, you know, you are the last person that God can use. In, according to many things, we feel that. But according to God's economy, it's very different. There is a strategy in God. The strategy is precisely to show that it is not possible through your effort, but it is through his power that things are going to happen. And for that to happen, you need to give room for God to show his glory. And sometimes that room implies that you need to be so broken and limited so the glory of God passes you and you can point that and say, you see, this is God moving. This is why you and I are not people who move where what we see. The scripture says, we do not, we live by what? Faith, not by sight, not by what we see. So what happened after that is that Samuel anoints um, David. It says, then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on the spirit of the Lord came powerful upon David. And Samuel then went to Ramah. You see, at that point when he was anointed, then something else happened. The life of David changed. The life of David changed. When we are in God's strategy, our life is going to change. So what we find in here is that he changes in three places. His leadership. Now he understands that the one who's leading his life is not himself or the sheep or the owner of the sheep or his father even. The one who's leading his life is what? The spirit of God. So when we are saying, God, I want to be in your strategy, it means that you're giving up the leadership of your life and you're allowing the spirit of God to lead you. It's when you wake up in the morning, every morning, and do not put your feet on the ground without you saying, God, lead me today because I'm professional in doing mistakes. That's in me, not in you. And I don't want to do one. And if I do one, help me to bring my heart back to you. Then change of calendar. It is not about doing what I want to do. It's about God planning my life. And knowing that where you are, guys, whatever job you take, whatever place you are, you are there representing God to be used for his glory. And you change your company. You see, for David, before, it was to be around sheep that were really cute. After that, he ended needing to be the musician of Saul, who was creepy at that point. And it wasn't fun, but he needed to learn the life of the kingdom. He needed to learn that. So God is going to put you in places that at the moment are not going to make sense. But for the rest of the story, God has a plan, as he did with David. If you think about David and what implies in the future, you will see that it says, in the scripture, and, and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure how long? Forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. That forever implies us too. Because then we can see the promise that happened in the New Testament in Luke when it says, you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob. How long? Forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. You and I are part of the strategy of God with David, then with Jesus, and Jesus coming to our lives. So the invitation today is that you and I say to God, take my life. Let me be part of your strategy. Let me learn to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen.